And nimodactomy is removing the whole of the lung. So instead of uh, removing uh, the whole lung or a lobe, you remove the segment which is involved in pathology. For instance, if there is a bronchiectasis involving the lower uh, apical lobe, you remove the lower apical lobe and get rid of bronchiectasis. If the rest of the bronchus are normal, you leave them behind. So that is the uh, right lobe, uh, right lung, having three lobes, upper, middle and lower. And the right, this is the trachea. The right bronchus is much more wider than the left. I won't, um, I'll be able to show you the left when I remove the left lung. And any foreign body uh, which is inhaled is more likely to go and uh, get lodged in the right bronchus rather than the left because the right bronchus is more wider. Now we come to the left lung. The left lung has got only two lobes, upper and lower. The fissure is the same one. This is the oblique fissure running, running from behind at the T2 spine, following posteriorly, following laterally, following anteriorly and going up to the sixth day. So that is the oblique fissure. There is no horizontal uh, fissure over here. And this divides lung into upper and lower lobe. The upper lobe again has got an apical segment. This is the apical segment. It has got an anterior segment and it has got a posterior segment. These are the uh, upper lobes. In addition to these three segments, the upper lobe has also got lingular segments. Lingula is like tongue. It has got these two segments, superior and inferior lingular segments. This replaces the middle lobe. There is no middle lobe because of the uh, encroachment of the uh, heart on the left side. This is known as cardiac notch. Cardiac notch is reflection of the pleura from the sternum towards the left side. And this part of the heart is known as bare area of the heart. It is divided of pleura. Pleura gets reflected from here. Uh, this is the mediastinal pleura and then it gets reflected on the coastal surface. So that is the cardiac notch. Alright, now let's take the lobes out one by one. Apical lobe. I'm going to remove apical lobe and the posterior one. You can see it over here. This is the upper bronchus. I've removed the apical and the posterior. And this is anterior and the upper bronchus also gives rise to a lingular bronchus. This is lingular. This is superior lingular and that's the inferior lingular. Superior and inferior lingular. So this is the whole of the, this is the left main bronchus and this is the upper lower bronchus. Having the three segments uh, and the two lingular segments. So these are the five ones. Alright. So that's the upper lobe. Again, uh, upper lobe is mainly uh, anterior. Very small part of the upper lobe is posterior. Now we come to the lower lobe. The lower lobe of the lower lobe of the left side. The lower lobe of the left side has got an apical segment. This is apical segment. That's the apical segment. Now, because of the heart, there is no medial segment here. Because of the encroachment of the heart on the left side, the medial segment is absent. So you got an anterior segment. This is an anterior segment. This is the lateral segment. And this is posterior segment. So that is the lower lobe bronchus which has got an apical, anterior, lateral and posterior. There is no mid, medial basal segment. All these uh, lower lobe segments are also known as uh, basal segments. Apical basical, lateral basical, posterior basal, anterior basal because they are on the uh, lower lobes. They are known as 
basal segments. So that is uh, the bronchopulmonary segments. Here on the left side, the bronchopulmonary segment which is absent is the middle uh, uh, segment because of the presence of the heart. Now this is the trachea. Trachea starts at the cricoid cartilage, just at the lower end of the larynx. And it runs lower down up to the up, up to its bifurcation uh, from up to T4 or at the angle of Louis. It bifurcates at the angle of the Louis into a right main bronchus and the left main bronchus. Now this inner edge of the bifurcation is known as carina. This is a very sharp edge, inner edge, the carina. And this is very much appreciated when you are doing bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy is passing a scope inside the trachea and looking at the inside of the trachea and bronchus. So this angle is very prominent when you do a bronchoscopy. Now uh, this uh, angle also contains lymph nodes, tracheobronchial, tracheobronchial lymph nodes. Uh, a large amount of lymph nodes are present over here, which are draining the mediastinum, which are draining the heart, which are draining the pleura. And if these uh, nodes are enlarged, then this angle becomes uh, widened. And this you can appreciate it when you do a bronchoscopy. In cases of carcinoma, if there are secondaries in the tracheobronchial nodes, this may become enlarged and they may be taken for biopsy when you are doing mediastinoscopy. So that's the trachea. The trachea has got uh, incomplete uh, cartilage rings anteriorly. Posteriorly, the cartilage rings are deficit and replaced by muscles. All right, so that is the trachea. This is the main bronchus, that is right bronchus. And um, we come to the great vessels, mediastinum. We'll cover in the next lecture, but just to briefly tell you about the uh, upper part of the mediastinum. This is the aorta. Upper part, this is the arch of the aorta. And this is the descending aorta. This is the descending aorta. And it gives branches. It gives a brachiocephalic on the right side, which divides into right subclavian and right uh, common carotid. On the left side, is gives left common carotid and left subclavian. So that is the aorta. And this is the pulmonary trunk. This one is pulmonary trunk going towards the uh, pulmonary lungs. Uh, 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 and these are the pulmonary veins over here. Pulmonary veins, four pulmonary veins, two over here and two behind. And then you got the trachea and behind the trachea is esophagus. Esophagus is over here. And look how esophagus goes in front of the aorta as it enters the diaphragm. The aorta uh, is behind it. Uh, it's on the lateral side and posterior to trachea is because in initially then as it travels towards the lower part of the thorax it becomes anterior and uh, penetrates the diaphragm at uh, T10 and aorta goes up to T12. So these are the structures which are running. When you are approaching the, uh, the esophagus the better approach is from the right thoracotomy, fifth intercostal space and when you are approaching the aorta the better approach will be from the left thoracotomy, fifth intercostal space again. So this is a brief introduction of the pulmonary segment. Thank you.